because these people have shown us what these prophets look like in their moments of grief and shown us the potential of what we can be in our moments of grief too. Allah predestined that this would be the object that would bring forth or as a means for that benefit, but it's not the source of benefit. There may be aspects of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr that bring us sorrow. We don't question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr, but yet as human beings, we may definitely grieve. Now, how, cognitively thinking about that ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in its perfection. Mm. So that means that this difficulty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in my life, there is precision in that too. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome back to Quran 30 for 30. The question from yesterday's juz, which is the only surah in the Quran that has two sajdat tilawas, two prostrations in it? So go ahead and answer below inshallah ta'ala. We want to welcome you all back and remind you in the time to donate, especially as we come into the last 10 nights. Sign up for the last 10 night donation, inshallah. Join us for the webathon and continue to share the Ramadan series, continue to share Quran 30 for 30. Download the ebook, and I think I got all the announcements. We got Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Abdullah Duro here, and Ustad Lubna Mullah. How are you? Doing well, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah our director of Tarbiyah, she's going to keep us, inshallah ta'ala, um, you know, in order. In Alhamdulillah. Case, in case we, we um, you know, get out of order. We need Tarbiya, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we're very happy to have you, Ustad Lubna. How are you? I'm doing well, Alhamdulillah. Happy to be here. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How's your family? Doing well. Sheikh Suhail as well. Doing well. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So everyone should check out the marriage retreats that you all do. They're absolutely amazing, mashallah. So, um, you know, mashallah, Ustad Lubna and Sheikh Suhail take people out, I think, like all over the world. You, you do retreats in places I've never heard of. So people, <laughs> <laughs> people should go, inshallah ta'ala, and benefit in the night. Definitely, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and, and reward you for all that you do. Amen. 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 So inshallah ta'ala, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulina wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Subhanallah, there was a realization in this juz that I hope inshallah ta'ala will be beneficial to all of you. The last two ajza are some of the richest ajza in the Qur'an in terms of stories of the prophets. So you have Maryam and Taha and Anbiya and Hajj and so many beautiful stories of prophets that are coming through. And we also come into these 10 verses now in Juz 18, Surat Al-Mu'minun. And of course, Surat Al-Mu'minun, the first 10 verses and the last 10 verses of Surat Al-Furqan are really the definition of what a believer should strive to be and the reward that has been promised by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. But I want you to read these ajza together, inshallah ta'ala, in the following way. I want you to take the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Mu'minun, which were verses that made the Prophet Sallallahu happy, that pleased the Prophet Sallallahu and that gave him another sense of relief, alayhi salatu wassalam. I want you to read these 10 verses and then connect them to the Prophets that are mentioned in the previous two chapters of the Qur'an. And that's something, subhanAllah, that I just attempted to do, and I found so much richness in its reflection. And this is something that you too can do. You might remember when we had Sheikh Shadi al-Masri, Hafidahullah, beautiful, beautiful reflections. And that is the beauty of the Qur'an, is that it continues to give us these types of reflections. Qad aflah al mu'minun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off with, indeed, the believers have succeeded. In Surah Maryam, two juz before, again, in the series of suwar about the prophets of Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Ulaika ladina an'ama Allahu alayhim min al-nabiyyin." That they are the ones who Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is pleased with from the prophets, and He continues, "Wa min dhuriyati Adam," and from the descendants of Adam. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions from those that were saved with Nuh alayhi salam, and He continues on and on to say, "These are the ones who indeed are successful because they received the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as a result of their great sacrifices." So, "Qad aflah al-mu'minun," project it backwards on the previous two ajza and see how many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the success of these prophets after trials. And Allah azza wa jal says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who humble themselves in, themselves in prayer. Those who humble themselves in prayer. Think about the dua of Ayyub alayhi salam in the previous juz and the dua of Zakaria alayhi salam in the juz before that. Think about how humble and devoted Zakaria is as he is calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Masjid al-Aqsa, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free it. And Ayyub alayhi salam as he's calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both of them alone, both of them in a different circumstance, but in the same spiritual state of humility and awe before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their hearts khashi'ah, with their hearts humbled before 
their Lord. So think of the dua of Ayyub, think of the dua of Zakaria, think of Maryam alayhi salam and her humility in prayer as she's calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah makes her an example for men and women, kanat min al qanitin, that she is from those who are devout in their worship. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who avoid idle speech. And one of the most beautiful descriptions of Yahya alayhi salam is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him as zakatan, hananan min nadunna wa zakatan wa kana taqiyya. That Allah Azza wa Jal gave him a special type of compassion. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a special type of piety, a special type of purity. And of the meanings of his name Yahya is that he has haya, modesty. So think of the beautiful speech of Yahya alayhi salam and how Allah molded him in that way. And you'll see a connection between verse three and verse four, by the way, that zakatan on the inside, if a person is pure on the inside, the greatest way that manifests them itself is in the purity of their tongue. Then the next verse, وَالَّذِينَهُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ Those who pay their charity and who actually do their charity properly. One of the descriptions of the mission of Isa alayhi salam in Surah Maryam is that uh, Isa alayhi salam mentions that he will come back and he will establish uh, as salah was zakah, right? Prayer and zakah. وَالَّذِينَهُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ Those who protect their chastity. Think about Maryam al-Tahira, Maryam the pure one. And Yahya who is described as Sayyidan wa Hasura, Someone who is a leader and someone who restrains himself in every way. إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ Of course, following the chastity, the, the characteristic of chastity. Finally, whoever seeks beyond that is a transgressor. And then, the believers who are true to their trust and their covenants. Think about Ibrahim and Ismail, Siddiqan Nabiya, a person of truth, and Ismail, Sadiq al Wa'd, a person who upholds the promise. And then think about those, those who properly observe their prayers. And of course, they used to all command with prayer and zakah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be like the prophets and follow in their example and be the true believers, following the example of these true believers. Allahumma ameen. Shaykh Abdullah, tafadmah. Jazakum Allahu khayran ahsantum. Barakallahu fikum. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam, wa barak ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Amma ba'du, he mentioned the primary example or the example being that they are the prophets alayhim wa salam. What I want to talk about is particularly in the chapter of Al-Furqan, particularly the third verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes his lordship and it's really for things, it's really some items for us to think about in regards to his characteristics. You see, the purpose of life, as we all know, is to worship God. But sometimes when we think worship, we may think only in the masjid or only in places where a lot of Muslims gather, but it's something that is very comprehensive in every aspect of our life we have the opportunity to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we think of worshiping God, who is he? What does he say about himself? What does he say that he is not? And that is really what la ilaha illallah really means. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah. Allah describes here certain characteristics that the human being cannot deny as to how he is, who he is, and what he is not, and how he is greater than every single thing because he created it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after Audhu Billah and Shaitan Rajeem, after establishing his lordship in the first two verses, inshallah, which Sister Lubna will talk about, and the greatness of, 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 of distinguishing the message and how he is the creator of the heavens and the earth, he mentions what some people did after having that knowledge. He says, very beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, but they have taken besides him gods which create nothing. They have taken besides him gods. Aliha means God or gods. They have taken besides the creator of those who they claim to be their gods as gods in and of itself. And that is the essence of polytheism. When you give the creation characteristics of the creator. And then he, 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 he mentions facts, but it's for us to really think about. When he says, لا يخلقون شيئا وهم يخلقون They do not create anything, meaning the gods that they worship besides Allah, they do not create anything, rather they are created. When we stop and think about Allah, one of his names is Al-Khaliq. Al-Khaliq really means 
that he brings things from non-existence to existence. And everything that we see and think about and imagine is created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not. He is the one that brought it into existence. Therefore, he says, they are the ones that, he's the one that's the creator and they are created. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created them and they are created. To remind us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there was nothing before him. And he is the one that brought everything into existence. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, anfusim wala nafa. They do not control or have any authority, do not bring any harm or any benefit. Because there are some things that we have to understand. When we look at those gods that they may attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or say that they are gods besides the creator, we really have to think, do they bring any benefit or any harm to me ultimately? Now, one may believe that that object or that thing brings benefit or harm. And we say thing because sometimes the God may be money. Sometimes it may be a person that they bring the ultimate, and this word is very important, the ultimate benefit, that they are the source of benefit. This is what's very, very important for us as human beings to know. What is the source of benefit and what is the source of harm? Does not mean that we cannot take medicine, for example, but as we see, we'll see in the mashallah, the series and what's going to be mentioned as well, Allah predestined that this would be the object that would bring forth or as a means for that benefit, but it's not the source of benefit. That's why when you look at the great, the grandest, grand scale of things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of benefit and the one that he is the source that allows that harm to take place for divine wisdom. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking here, is saying here, they do not have control. They cannot bring any harm or any benefit. One has to ask that simple question. Okay, who created this? And if I believe that this other than Allah, other than the creator of the heavens and the earth, does he bring real harm or benefit? If the answer is no, that means that there was someone or something that created that object. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ مَوْتًا وَلَا حَيَاتًا وَلَا نُشُورًا They do not control or have dominion over death or life or uh, resurrection. So bringing life to any human being or any, any, any object, any form of creation and causing it to leave this earth. None of us know when we are going to die. It is a mystery. But the one that has knowledge of that within his predestination, within his knowledge and his wisdom, he is the one that has control over all of that. And he is the one that has control over uh, uh, the, the, the resurrection that all of the creation will go in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will have to answer for every act that they have done good or that which is not and will be held accountable for that. And then his mercy will encompass all of that subhanahu wa ta'ala. But these are questions to ask ourselves, ourselves in regards to the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that brings harm and, and allows benefit and also the one that creates life and death and at the end, resurrection. These questions, the individual has to look, has introspection to look at themselves, look at their level of control and look at what ultimately has control over all things. And that's the, the what, that, what Allah wants us to ponder over because he is the one with his predestination, his knowledge and his wisdom. When we understand that, it allows us to have a level of tranquility. I wanted to talk about the ayah that you just mentioned, uh, before the one that uh, Sheikh Abdullah just mentioned, and that's in Surah Furqan, uh, verse number two, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of his power, and he says, and then later in the ayah, hmm. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, he has dominion, he has power over the entire universe over the land and the sky, over everything. And he has created everything in it with precision. And he has predestined things for it to be the way it looks, the way it has characteristics, with precision. That knowledge, inshallah, can help us when we think about things that are difficult in our lives, especially calamities. When we think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr, we could think about things that are positive, that that, uh, that, that bring us a lot of joy, like, like the birth of a child, like a marriage, like getting a new job. All of those things are fantastic aspects that immediately all of us can agree upon that we would find joy in. However, there may be aspects of Allah SWT's qadr that bring us sorrow. 
We don't question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr, but yet as human beings, we may definitely grieve. Now, how, cognitively thinking about that ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything in its perfection. Mm. So that means that this difficulty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in my life, there is precision in that too. And I wanted to reflect on something, subhanAllah, in the last six months, four of my close friends have lost their sons. SubhanAllah, ranging from ages four to 23. And each of them, inshallah, all the scholars in their communities have said that, inshallah, that may they be accepted as shaheed for the, due to the way that they have passed away. Allahumma ameen. Ameen, ameen. And subhanAllah, you know, one may think, how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test Ben Yameen at one and a half years old with cancer and let him and his family struggle with that for two years? How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take Haritha, Allah yarhamu, on the way to his wedding and have his bride witness that on FaceTime? How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, somebody may think this, we're not questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr, but those thoughts may come. How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take Abdul Hadi, who was so inspirational to his MSA and so loved, take him? Was, he was too young, somebody may think like that. And finally, just two weeks after Abdul Hadi passed away, Talha, Allah yarhamu. Allah, somebody may think, how can somebody take such a bright child, so active and, and, and mashal, full of energy, take him away, he's the only child of his righteous parents. We, 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 we're human beings, and sometimes in our weakness, we have those thoughts that, that are fleeting. Yet when we ground ourselves, if Allah created the blade of grass, the leaf, the bird with its feathers, the human beings with all of our faculties, He created it with perfection and precision, the way He wanted it to be. Don't we think then that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala precisely took Benjamin from his parents at a time that was, with all of his wisdoms, it was meant to be. It was meant to be that these four boys were taken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the precise time for them to be considered sh shaheed inshallah, for their parents to be tested and inshallah through their patients be elevated to genital for those inshallah, for their families perhaps and their communities to be guided and become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perhaps even through their martyrdom that perhaps even some people were outside of the folds of Islam to come into believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's precision. So that, cognitively, when we accept that, it is much easier for us to quell our pain and our suffering when we, when we contemplate and bear the loss of loved ones in our lives. So we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of those that I mentioned, Ben Yameen, Talha, Haritha, and Abdul Hadi, genital for those. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give uh, patience and mercy to their families. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide their communities through this difficulty, Allahumma Ameen. Barakallah yeah. Fiki. Zakumullah Khair for bringing that up. And again, we reiterate, SubhanAllah, sometimes there's great comfort in, in saying their names. And we ask everyone who's here, when, when you hear the name, inshallah, ta you make dua. Bin Yameen, Haritha, Abdul Hadi, and Talha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept them all as shuhada. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant their parents, Baytul Hamd, uh, a home of praise in paradise with the Prophet Sallallahu who buried six of his seven children. And all of those parents that have suffered with the loss of their child. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala allow that nightmare. It really is a nightmare for people, SubhanAllah. And it is our worst nightmare, uh, honestly, even, even those of us who haven't been tested with that. May Allah protect our children. It's a worst nightmare, you know? And so may Allah Azza Wa allow it to be replaced with what may now seem like a dream. The reality of being greeted by your children at the gates of paradise and being told to come with us. And the Prophet Sallallahu gives very vivid <laughs> descriptions, right? Um, you know, he, he even one narration, he takes the hand. He says, you know, he's taking you by the hand like this or by the shirt like this and pulling you into paradise. And that's a comfort ta'ala, for, for the believers because, um, you know, I know when you're with a parent um, and they start to recall memories, one thing that you'll hear, Ustad uh, Lubna, I'm sure you've heard it, you've done chaplaincy in Sheikh Abdullah as well. You'll hear them recall like very specific things that are irrelevant to everyone but them, yeah. right? Like they'll just bring up randomly what they were wearing that day when they're recalling a memory or what they smelled like. Or I remember this happened on that day, the, the very quote unquote irrelevant details. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi gives what might seem like an irrelevant detail of like exactly how they'll pull you into paradise. For the miscarried fetus, bihabla surra, even with the umbilical cord. Um, and for the, the child coming to the parent and grabbing them by the hand or grabbing them by their garment and entering them into paradise with the night time. It just so happens, subhanAllah, this is 
this episode parallels the Qadr series where we're at with the loss of loved ones and dealing with the loss of loved ones. That's the hardest time to accept Qadr. The loss of, you know, first of all, it's easy to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the bestower and the creator of the heavens and the earth and the source of all blessing when you're living in that blessing mm. in such an obvious way. It's easy at that point to do yeah. Islam and to say, yeah, I made your and things are going great. The real test of Iman is when everything is going opposite of what you're asking for. And you have to trust the one that you're asking for, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he has your best interest at heart. And that Allah Azza wa Jalla is doing for you what's better for you. That's where the true test of a believer comes in. And that's why the reward is Jannah, because you're here right. to be tested. <laughs> Allah sent you here to test you. You pass the test. If Allah strikes you with that type of a tribulation and you still believe. And that's why the famous hadith that we teach um, so frequently, hadith Qudsi, Mari Abdul Mu'min Indi Jaza Ida Qabatu Safiya Min Ahl Dunya Thumma Hatasabahu Ida Al Jannah. That there is no reward for my servant if I take away his or her loved one. Thumma Hatasabahu. And that person said, Alhamdulillah, Inna Lillahi Wa Inna Ilayhi Rajiun. Illa Al Jannah, except for Jannah. It's as if even the wording of the hadith Qudsi, you know, my Shaykh, when he, when he taught it to me, he, uh, or taught it to us in our class, he said, SubhanAllah, it's like Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying in this hadith Qudsi as if it's saying that there is nothing else that could comfort a person that's been through a tragedy like that. And there is nothing else that would make it worth it for that person to have gone through something like that except for Jannah. So what else would I give this person except for Jannah mm. if they were patient with this tribulation? Like yeah. what else is there? Because I don't think there's a single person that has lost a child in this dunya that ever really quite feels the same about it again. You know, you kind of get over a loss of a job, even, you know, and it's very difficult, the loss of a parent, the lot, mm. like these types of losses, like the loss of a spouse, the loss of a child, those are different. They hit you differently. Um, like, will you ever really taste the sweetness of, of this life again? You'll have happy moments, but that will always kind of, that will still be your life story. And that's why Elijah was just saying, Jannah. <laughs> like you were sent here to earn Jannah yeah. and you earned it with Alhamdulillah. So stay on that Hamd, stay in that state. And not only, and, and this is in the previous juz, and I'm sorry, I know I'm going so long, but may Allah reward you. It, it opened yeah. so many, so many things. But uh, with Ayyub alayhi salam, Allah did not just give him the reward of Jannah. Allah gave him his children back and doubled the family size. <laughs> So he lost all 10 of his children. He got 20 in return and he got his Jannah and he was immortalized in the Quran for his Ibadah in the previous juz. So, Qadr, yes, Qadr, subhanAllah. 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 Yeah, SubhanAllah. And I just wanted to point out mm. to my friends, particularly those parents of the four, both parents, mashallah, all, all, all eight of those individuals, amazing belief, amazing acceptance. They, they, they grieve and yet, in their moment of grief, wallahi, they taught all of us. And some of them, there's hundreds in the attendance of their funerals, of their, of their children, and some thousands. And wallahi, they taught all of us what it means to really accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr. And you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and grant them the highest levels and for their patience. And them? They all, all of them, without exception, will say Ahl Gaza, the people of yes. Gaza taught them yes. something. Brother Aftab and, and Sister Hanifa, when they, when they lost Abdul Hadi, your friend, and of course our, our friend as well. Um, mentioned Gaza. Brother Faiz or Usman, whose mother passed away and we, we buried his mother, on the way to the janazah said Gaza. We're talking about Gaza on the way to the janazah, mm -hmm. you know, on the way to the burial. Because these people have shown us what these prophets look like in their moments of grief and shown us the potential of what we can be in our moments of grief too. Absolutely. Sheikh Abdullah, I want to. No, I have no, I have no. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, Sheikh. Stada Lubna, um, I guess I'll ask you one more question, inshallah ta'ala, because you've been around people. What is the hal of a person's heart? What is the state of a person's heart like in these moments? Um, is there like an energy around someone, you know, who's, who's grieving, but with, with joy and with pleasure? And what does that do to the people around them? It's totally uplifting. You, 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 it's so hard to, to explain it, but to see somebody crying 
just over the loss. They accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr. But then maybe just a sentence afterwards, they're remembering something funny that their child did. Mm-hmm. And it's bringing them joy. That, that is so powerful in and of itself. It's truly a sign of their, of their acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Truly a sign of their really high level of iman, mashallah, that they're able to bring peace. I've, I've seen the people who lost their loved ones, they're, they're hugging, they're comforting other people. They're comforting their friends who are crying louder than they, you know, they're, they're accepting. And they're comforting others. That's the energy that they're bringing. They're able to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, qadr with such grace that they're even able to, you know, have some joy in those moments when they're remembering the, the passing and even comfort others. And, and, and I want to say one other thing, subhanAllah, my friends, um, Dua and Yemen, who they lost Harith on the way to his wedding, they flew the moment they heard that Abdul Hadi had passed away, they flew to his janazah, even though Brother Yemen was about to have surgery, so that they can kind of help them walk through that grief. To give them tarbiyah, even in that moment wow. of like, we're here with you and we want to educate your friends and your community on how to help you guys wow. through your grief. So just absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing teachers, subhanAllah. Shaykh Abdullah, I feel like, like when you read about the prophets of Allah, we should be inspired by them in the same way, right? Like that's the challenge, right? Is the Quran, when you read it, these aren't mythical figures. These aren't metaphors. These are like real people. Like Ayyub and Zakaria cried real tears. Maryam had real fear for her life and really wanted to be forgotten. That's, this is real. These are real human beings. And so when you become a companion of the Quran, like you're becoming a companion of all of these people too, by extension, if you're reading it deep enough. Right. And like, I, I agree, like the most, the highest my Iman ever is, is when I'm around people of Iman losing their loved ones. It's the highest, like, cause they're just, like breezes are coming from them, you know? Yeah, it's, wow, that's amazing. And you see that it's just that faith activated, you know, subhanAllah, uh, and that reliance on Allah, and like mentioning Gaza, and you say, cause sometimes you ask yourself, sometimes you may say to yourself, if it was me, I don't know if I'd be this way, mm-hmm. or how could they, you know, and you say, subhanAllah, you know, this is, you know, the you know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, it's the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place serenity in the hearts of these parents of the, their lost loved ones. Um, you know, so I mean, I mean. Not only not a sign of Allah's hate, it's a sign of Allah's love. Mm-hmm. Complete tahawud, like complete shift of perspective. Not perspective. only does Allah not hate you, this is a sign of Allah's love in the nighttime Allah. based upon your response. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comfort the grieving parents uh, of them all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comfort those who have lost their loved ones. And may Allah Azza join us all with our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Ustaz al-Ibn al-Zakallah khair. Shaykh Abdullah. To all of you as well for tuning in. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.